It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Want to ensure a safe overlanding journey without animals or knowing how to deal with them before the problem happens? Stay tuned everyone to Nomad Overland because that's what's coming up next. Hello and welcome back. My name is Ben and this is Nomad Overlanding. Thank you so much for being here. It is a pleasure to serve your overlanding needs today. All right, let's jump right into the video because this is actually a really important one. And before I get into the video, I do want to offer a caveat. This video is for informational purposes only. Please, by all means, take care when you're dealing with wildlife. I'm sure you've seen many of YouTube video where somebody's walking up to a buffalo in, you know, Yellowstone National Park and gets knocked over, or even worse. We must always respect nature or else it will bite you on the ass every time. Hopefully, not literally. Okay, let's jump right in to video. First, um, research local wildlife. This is a really important one because of course, if we're going into an area, even an area that we might be familiar with, there may be animals or wildlife that we are unfamiliar with. And it's an, always a good idea to, to kind of expect the unexpected. Know what kind of animals are in the area and therefore it will give you a chance to actually prepare yourself mentally for what might come up into your camp. Animals to consider things obviously like bears and snakes are a really important one to know. Um, are the snakes in the area going to be poisonous? Probably a good idea to find out. Um, what kind of bears? Do you have black bears, brown bears? If you're up way far north, are there grizzlies potentially in the area? And if there are, how do you deal with that? Wolves, coyotes, foxes, raccoons, all of these types of animals may invade your camp, right? But remember, they're not invading your camp because they hate you. They're invading your camp because it's their territory first, okay? So an important aspect of all of this while researching, you are visiting them, not the other way around, okay? Yeah, be aware of that. That includes squirrels too. Squirrels, chipmunks, they can get into your stuff just as easily as a raccoon can, so be aware of that. Number two, this is a big one. Store your food properly. Store your food properly. Bear resistant containers are very, very handy okay, and they will protect your food. My recommendation personally would be always, always, always hang your food. Don't leave food on the ground. And that includes, that includes wrappers of things that had food in it, put it in that bear container and get it up off the ground. You don't wanna have something coming into your camp that is simply smelling a wrapper, okay? And I don't mean a wrapper yo-yo-yo, I mean like a gum wrapper, candy, something like that. Anything like that could be a trigger for an animal to come into your camp. I've had experience with that one, so I know. Everything goes up in the tree. Also, keep your campsite clean of food. So after you've had your dinner or even a, a breakfast lunch, make sure everything is properly cleaned up and all of your food goes back up. Even if you are in the camp and you are not eating in certain areas at certain times of the season, get your food up top. Number three, when you are out, um, let's say you have a base camp, but you're out doing a little day hike, make noise while you are out. Okay, this could be just chit-chatting to the people around you. It could be just blowing a whistle every 10 or 15 steps. It could be having a, um, it could be having a, a, a metal cup attached to your back that's clanging around. This is a warning sign to other animals that there's something coming and I'm going to avoid it. So by making noise, it allows the animal to get out of the area that you're in. Even though it's their area, it's their territory, they just hear something that they're unfamiliar with and they're just not going to be involved in that sound. Number four, number four, 
always, always, always maintain a safe distance. Do not be the kind of person that walks up to a buffalo in uh, bison in Yellowstone National Park and uh, decides to take a selfie. That is just plain stupid. Don't do that. Don't risk your life over, uh, over a, a, fo a photograph like that. Please don't. Please be serious. Remember, in nature, when we go into that environment, we are visiting them, not the other way around, people, okay? Seriously, take nature with a respect. If you don't, it will come back to bite you, sometimes very, very literally, okay? Now, if you are looking at nature, you could use a zoom on your camera. You could have a, you know, a big focal length on your DSLR. You could uh, have a pair of binoculars. Great, that's fine. But you want to make sure you're keeping a safe distance. Also remember, wildlife will tend to run faster than you. So if you have a kilometer distance between the bear that you're looking at with your binoculars, that gives you a good enough distance that you're going to be safe. Please, please, please be safe. Cannot stress that enough. Okay, number five. For those people who take their pets out with them, make sure your pets are leashed. Okay, I know there might be this sense that, um, well, I don't have to follow a, a leash rule while I'm uh, out in the wilderness, but at the same time, um, if your pet is off leash and runs out of the camp, that could trigger an animal attack against your pet, uh, be it probably a dog, I would imagine. I don't know how many of you bring cats to your event, but I would imagine most of you would be bringing dogs. That could uh, trigger, let's say, a coyote, for example, or a wolf. Um, seeing an animal that is smaller, it instantly triggers that predator connection and I'm going to track that animal and if that animal comes, that dog comes back into your camp, you could literally be bringing another animal into your camp without even knowing because there's a good chance you're not going to hear that animal coming into the camp because they're on predator mode and they're gonna be stealthy, and you might not know that that animal is there, okay? So keep the animal in your camp on a leash. Number six, uh, carry bear spray or other types of deterrents. If by chance you do have an animal come into your uh, camp, and I'm not talking about a chipmunk here, I'm talking about something that could pose a potential safety threat to you. Having some kind of bear spray or animal spray that you can immediately deploy off of your belt, okay? There's the key. A bear spray that you can immediately deploy off your belt. That means the bear spray is on you or the animal spray is on you at all times. Remember, the spray is there to give you distance between you and the animal, okay? They will probably run away, let's hope. Touch wood, they will run away because that uh, spray is getting into their eyes and ca causing them discomfort. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're gonna stay away permanently. Now, if that's the case, if you've had an encounter, you've used the spray, my advice, pack up and leave, don't stay, because there's a very good chance that that animal will return. Not 100%, but I, I would imagine that that animal would come back, because they know something's there, and the threat is gone, and they might decide to turn around and come back and check it out again. So if, if it was me and I had that encounter, spray, give distance, the animal will hopefully run away, and you pack up and, and leave and, and try another location. Number seven, speaking of getting away from animals, if you do notice that you get into an area and you do see tracks, pick another campsite because something is literally walking through the campsite when you're not there. Now, it could be anything. It could be a wild boar. It could be deer. 
Um, maybe a good idea to have uh, like a little uh, piece of paper or something with different tracks on it so you can look at it, look down and say, ah, that's a boar track or oh, that's a black bear track. Um, but if, if there is something that's trekking through your camp, um, it could mean a couple of different things. One, somebody hasn't been there for a while and that animal has picked that campsite as part of their, their territorial walking. So better to be safe than sorry. Pick another camp and try something else. Number eight, um, be oh, aware of yeah. seasonal behavior. So the spring behavior is going to be different from the fall behavior. And so being aware of that and knowing what kind of behavior you might encounter in spring versus fall, that, that, that could be very helpful. So for example, if you're in the spring and it's mating season and there could be um, adult male deer around, they're going to be rutting. Um, you might want to check the trees around your campsite. Do you see any bark? freshly come off a higher uh, portion of the tree trunk. That means the deer could be rutting. Um, uh, are you seeing uh, bits of fur on lower ends of the, of the tree? Could be that a bear has walked through and something has snagged a little bear hair. Okay, again, that's a warning sign to leave the camp. Don't stay in that area because they've marked their territory and you've just entered the, their zone. So camp at your own um, peril in that regard. Bears, deer, moose, elk, uh, coyotes, foxes, uh, you know, that sort of animal, they're all gonna have their own systems during the season. So being aware of that, uh, very helpful. This is kind of tied into the first one by knowing what animals are actually in the area. So if you know that X animal is in the area and you know it's springtime, well, what kind of connection can you find there in terms of their, their behavior? Okay, you don't have to be an animal psychologist to know this. Uh, you know, you don't have to get deep on it, but at least be aware that these things will come up. Number 10, um, have an emergency plan. So once you go all through this and you know what things are in your area, you know the habitat, you've moved camps because you don't want to have, you want to at least reduce the possibility of a wildlife encounter, what happens if there is? Well, you do have your bear spray available or your animal spray, but also have kind of a camp-wide emergency plan that everybody knows about, all right? So this could be, this could be for example, having, uh, having several people on track for first aid emergencies, okay? It could be that um, you're all going to basically jump into your vehicles if, a, if an animal does actually come in. Uh, it could be, you know, you start honking on your horns to make a lot of noise because you want the animal to disperse out of the camp. And at, very, at the very least, at the very worst, you start your engines and you leave camp and you leave whatever there is there and you just get out, right? That could be another uh, thing that you could do. You might also consider having like a bug out car where that car is stationary, ready to go, and has enough room in it to put everybody in there to get out of the camp in an absolute emergency, okay? So um, that way, you know, you leave the keys in the ignition, for example, and it just allows you, uh, the team that you're with, to get into that vehicle and out of the camp as quickly as possible, okay? So there's all sorts of potential escape plans that you and your team could come up with. That was just one off the top of my head. That's it, that's my top 10. I hope this has been helpful. And remember everybody from us here at Nomad Overlanding, please take animals seriously. We are going into their territory, not the other way around. It's their home, not ours. Stay safe, have fun, and be prepared. 
That's me, Ben from Nomad Overlanding. Thank you so much for being here. Check out our next video.